so I was scrolling on LinkedIn a lot over the past few weeks as I was <clears throat> checking out some of the different people who I connected with who were working on cool products or services in education and only really for the first time maybe I had glanced at it before did I notice the little sidebar that says something like LinkedIn today's news and views and maybe once or twice before I had I had clicked on that and read what other people said about a, about a popular story but it was really the first time I stopped and, and noticed what it was doing and, and why it was getting my attention. And what I realized was that this was a perfect example of a clear, convincing, short and direct use of language to get people's attention and get them to take action. So I'll give you a few examples of what I'm talking about. One of the one of the headlines, and, and just as a summary, an overview, these are short headlines in a little sidebar, and when you click them, they take you over to a page dedicated to a news story probably covered by a few different sources, uh, each with their own, of course, slant and, and bias in the story often, but then they also highlight some of the responses or commentary from folks on LinkedIn who their responses got some attention, presumably. So anyway, what do these headlines say that gets you to stop doing whatever you're doing and click over there. They say stuff like this, best and worst predictions of 2019. And that one, even if, even though it's so subtle and so general, actually is perfect for the context because everybody has been through the year 2019 and people love making predictions and seeing if they're right and wrong. So right in there is implied so much curiosity about which topics that everybody presumably knows are going to be in there and what did people accurately predict and what did they get wrong. Another interesting one was something along the lines of Beijing hits back on foreign tech. And this was, this is really a good lesson just in this one headline too. One, it shows action, like something like hits back or attacks. Two, it shows conflict and even combat, right? Kind of implying battle or war. Foreign, is, it sounds like they're talking about an enemy and hits back or attacks, whatever one it says, is a fight. So, those words get our attention. But also, and this is something that I learned from hearing a comedian talk, is that the ka sound, back, attack, tech, is one of the most powerful sounds in English, and I'm assuming in any language, for <coughs> getting people's attention and getting them to take notice of, of what those words are. So, uh, if you were saying, had the choice to say something like, uh, they attacked him, or they ganged up on him and hit him, attack is going to be listened to better. <coughs> so that was the, that was the second one. Uh, Another one said, Russia barred from next Olympics. Now, this is just newsworthy, if it's true. 
I didn't click through and read that particular story. But the subtle lesson is that at any moment in culture, and especially in politics, there are particular names. Most often these words are names, they're not just regular words, but most uh, particular names that involuntarily, immediately, unconsciously evoke emotional reactions from everyone and anyone. So right now and throughout you know, recent history, those words might be Trump. Say that word and people have an emotional reaction. Obama. Before, before Trump, same thing. Uh, other celebrities, Kanye West. Say Kanye West name, and people will have a, a strong emotional reaction. Um, even, even Oprah. Maybe a little bit less controversial, but same thing. People have a, rea a, a reaction. Um, so Russia now, with everything that has been discussed in our political area of our of our lives is in that category. You can just say the word Russia and it has so much emotional and informational baggage associated with it. So Russia gets barred from Olympics, one that provokes all sorts of curiosity about why that happened, what events led up to it, did some story come out about cheating, drug use, etc. Was it some sort of punishment related to other behavior? And uh, that one is just a guarantee to, to get people's attention. So those were three examples. If you have a LinkedIn account, you can log in and I think at any time, any day, they have the sidebar with today's news and views listed there. But this is just a, an example that really shows a larger overall point, which is to learn from the environment around you. Of course, I study and practice writing and particularly copywriting, trying to write to get people to take action, respond. So for me, whenever I can look at media that is being presented at a very large scale, like the LinkedIn headlines, I stop and think, they have a lot of data behind this, and they have algorithms selecting the best choices. So I should stop and notice why, or at least try to think about why these headlines are the way they are. And even if you are not a writer or a copywriter, or even have anything to do with business, this rule can apply just as well. If you're trying to improve physical fitness, you can look at the behaviors of, for example, large groups of people who are in shape. So, again, transferring that idea of scale. So, for example, people who go through military boot camp. There's a reason there's so many fitness courses that have a military theme, because it didn't just work one time with the first guy to join the US military. Over and over again, hundreds of thousands, millions of times, young men and now young women too go through military boot camp and or military training, whether it's whatever branch of the army, and often people recognize that they come back in better shape stronger, faster, tougher, etc. So that's a good place to look for principles of fitness. And if you've ever looked into those workouts, you'll say that you can, you can quickly realize that they are 
brutally simple, but also brutally effective. You do a lot of long running, pull-ups, push-ups, burpees, planks. They're holding uncomfortable positions, and they work. So that's another example where you can learn from the environment around you to try to borrow what other people have already figured out works at a large scale. Maybe, for example, if you are a teacher or a, uh, you're home with your kids or you do other, some, or you even you organize your church uh, or religious group, uh, the physical space, the building, so the home, or the classroom, or the, the church, the religious building, you could look at where are there other places where there are a lot of moving parts and where there's a lot of scale, where a lot of numbers, people going through them, and they've had to figure out the most efficient way to do things. Well, one example that comes to mind is McDonald's, right? If you walk up to a McDonald's, it's pretty clear what you have to do to get your food. And then, on the other end, of course there are exceptions, but it's clear that they have a system and a routine figured out for getting the food out as fast as possible. And it involves ease in plus, right, having everything in its place. It involves having an assembly line, a division of labor, repeatable processes, and all those things that make the food come out quickly. Say what you want about the quality of the food. Of course, you can do better by just eating some steak, some eggs, some vegetables. However, there's still some lessons to be learned from, from the way they do things. So, this, this recording, I want to give an overview of that concept of learning from the world around you. Uh, it's something that I'm trying to work on and, and take advantage of. same. So if you want to hear more from me, I send out a short tip every day, every single weekday, on the intersection of some of the topics I talked about here, business, technology, and always education. That's the most important part. So if you want to sign up for that, you can go to GerardDawson.com and there's a form on the page. There's also a button you can click at the top and that will let you hear more from me. And until next time.